Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Set Guide we have a very special Legend Alchemist build fully focused into as much bomb damage as possible that's right we are all about bombs to the Legend Mythic Path you'll be able to combine two bomb classes Grenadier and Arcane Bomber for not only double the maximum bomb damage possible 20 d6 and even double the bomb uses as well this build will get close to 180 bomb uses per day. You can really explode everything into submission. The DC of your bomb's ability will also be off the charts. Thanks to our extreme 68 intelligence, for super powerful effects outside of just damage such as knockdown, a very debilitating curse that reduces enemies' attacks and saves by minus 4, and even the ultimate dispelling ability possible because every one of your bombs will attempt to dispel all of the enemy's buffs as if you were a level 40 caster. And here's the best part, we get to throw multiple ones of every single one of these bombs per round. Lastly, this makes for a pretty versatile character as well, that can still hold their ground whenever you run out of bombs. First, we can equip melee weapons such as the very powerful Death's Consonant Bardish, you can even go with a long bow. And lastly, you have amazing spell support potential from both Alchemist and even a full scaling wizard spell book. You'll get to use even the ultimate area of effect instant death illusion spells at very high DC too, higher than 60. So let's get started, shall we? Well, when it comes to Alchemist, we are of course going with Grenadier, as it is the most bomb focused archetype of them all. Quite versatile too, I mean, you even get martial weapons proficiency for free, you gain the precise bomb discovery for free at level 2, which means your bombs will not have friendly fire against allies. You can also use your bombs as an area of effect ability with directed blast, starting from level 6. The problem is, well, this costs a standard action, so you are limited to just one per round, and I'm afraid the damage won't really be that good. Lastly, through staggering blast, you get to stagger enemies whenever scoring a critical hit with bombs. And since we are going with Trickster, we'll have pretty high critical chance. It does offer a DC, but this character has the highest DC for bombs possible. You actually get to keep everything else that's good about Alchemist. It's a reason why Grenadiers are so good. I mean, the only thing you lose is Poison Immunity, but who cares? You can just cast the Lay Poison Communal. When it comes to race, I'll be going with Human. It's just a personal preference, but as a Legend build, Eventually you'll have more than enough feats to go with any race you want, in the grand scheme it doesn't really matter. I just prefer the extra boost to the beginning of the game, and I like builds that are great even at the early levels. For background it's the usual, Street Urchin and Pickpocket, we want high initiative, especially as Legends cannot get Mythic initiative later on. When it comes to ability points, Intelligence is our main stat. We actually want to start at 20. As a legend, we can add more points into it whenever leveling up past 20. The higher your intelligence, the more bombs you can use and the higher their damage too. DC as well. Go with 16 dexterity. Besides that, I'd personally dump charisma. And then you might as well dump, let's say, strength for 12 constitution. We are mostly a ranged character, so we won't be getting hit that much. Still, I enjoy 20 constitution for the extra hit points, which do matter for legends, as we can increase this way higher than the norm. You can of course dump wisdom instead. For skill points, honestly this character will have almost all of the skills possible at the end game, since we are going with high intelligence, and as you level up and increase your intelligence, you'll get more skill points, but anyways. The best ones to focus to me are use magic device, always amazing. With this as always we can use scrolls to cast any spell from any class. Might as well go with the intelligence, knowledge, skills, arcana and world. You can even get trickery and stealth too, since we have decent dexterity. And the other point is up to you, if you didn't go with a human you wouldn't have it. It doesn't really matter, I'll just be picking perception. Now for our level 1 feats, since bombs are treated as ranged weapons, but they target touch armor class instead of the normal AC, so it's often way lower and much easier to hit enemies with bombs than let's say arrows from a bow. Well, there are still ranged attacks, which means you absolutely need point blank shot and precise shot right at level 1, or at level 3 if you went for another race. Otherwise, you'll take a massive penalty when hitting enemies engaged in melee with other allies with your bomb weapons. For spells, alchemists can actually learn spells from scrolls too, like a wizard, so don't feel restricted in what I pick here. And as always, I already have a complete guide with the best arcane spells. Link to the side here or in the pinned comment down below, so for now, I'll try to keep it simple. But through Strike, Shield, and Large Person Cure Light Wounds, 
targeted bomb admixture is a special alchemy spell that can increase your damage, especially against single targets like bosses. And eventually we'll get to cast this an infinite amount of times anyways. The bomb splash damage isn't that good later on. I'd rather focus on single target damage because we can spam our bombs a lot anyways. Well, besides that, Bomber's Eye, Reduce Person, Expeditious Retreat, you'll get to learn the other ones afterwards. For Deity, at first we are going with Trickster, so any that allows the Chaotic alignments, but eventually, as a legend, you can be of any alignment. Then either Chaotic, Good or Neutral. The build progression from 2 to 20 is mostly simple, we are just going to be a Grenadier anyways. For our level 2 discovery, I'd say we have two choices here. Choking Bomb can help a lot early on. Whenever you throw a bomb at the enemy, it won't really do any damage, but it will attempt to nauseate the targets. And nauseated creatures cannot do anything at all besides move, so they're basically <laughs> crowd controlled into submission. The problem is, sadly, despite this not being a poison effect, the way all cat coded nauseate in the game is that all demons are always immune to it, regardless of the source. However, early game you'll fight a lot of enemies that aren't demons, like the cultists, later the gargoyles, and so on. So it's basically like this, if you're making a character to play this build from the start, Choking Bomb can help. On the other hand, if you're already respecting at a later point, then it won't be needed anymore. You'll have other stronger bombs later on. In this case, you can also go with the Infusion ability. By default, alchemists can only cast spells on themselves. With this, you can use any spell on any ally, including personal-only spells. So, to put it simply, either pick Choking Bomb here and delay Infusion for level 4, or ignore Choking Bomb, since it won't affect demons, and just go for Infusion outright. For level 3, Ability Focus and Bombs. This adds plus 2 to the DC of many of your powerful crowd control abilities. At first, just Choking Bombs, but later we'll get a lot of other powerful debuffing effects. At level 4, increase Intelligence, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. For your level 4 discovery, Infusion, we can't really delay it any longer, and at this point we already have level 2 spells, a lot of powerful buffs for your party here. But True Infusion is pretty much Shield, True Strike, and Large Person, then at level 2, Animal Aspect and Gorilla is amazing for any of the tripping pets like the dog and the wolf. Once again, remember you can learn more spells at once by just scribing them from scrolls for your level 5 feat. To me, Extra Bombs. Whenever you pick this and you can pick it multiple times, you'll get 4 additional bombs per day. This does matter because I imagine if you want to play with this build and you want to be throwing your bombs, as much as possible. Without extra bombs, you'll run out very fast, especially early on. For another spell, False Life is great to cast on allies too, for temporary hit points. For a level 6 discovery, Cognatogen. This works just like the Mutagen, except increases your mental stats instead. And as I said before, the higher your intelligence, the better for your bombs. And then, well, Lesser Restoration is always fun to have. For level 7, Rapid Shot. Amazingly enough, once you get the fast bombs discovery at the next level, this will grant you an extra attack with your bombs per round. The penalty to AB doesn't matter because bombs target touch AC, which is always way lower than normal AC. Now for level 3 spells, well, haste is always a must-have. The extra attack will also grant you more bombs after fast bombs. For a level 8 discovery, fast bombs. With this you can throw multiple bombs per round, equal to the number of attacks you have for the round which is why we picked Rapid Shot. As a legend, we'll get even more attacks from higher than 20 base attack bonus. So overall, this is a must-have. For more level 3 spells, I really like protection from Eros Communal, as most of my party members can't really cast this. For level 9, you have a few different choices now. As far as I've heard, you can also go for 2 weapon fighting, which amusingly enough gives you more bomb attacks. I have tested the build with all of the 2 weapon fighting feats, and sadly, I didn't really find them useful, because the reality is, even with a lot of bomb attacks per round, your character still throws them kind of slowly animations-wise. So the end result is, even if I had a ton of attacks per round, I was only able to throw like 5 to 6 bombs before the new round came up anyways. If you ask me, and in the spirit of more early game, mid-game now fun, extra bombs yet again. Then go for displacement. For level 10, force bombs is amazing. First, because the damage inflicted is force, which is irresistible. Second, Whenever the enemy takes a hit from this, they have to pass a pretty high DC saving throw with this build or be knocked down. And as usual, enemies that are knocked down are marked for death, they'll pretty much die there. The only downside is the damage is lower than the normal bombs, 1d4 instead of 1d6. But honestly, because of how powerful knockdown is, 
I'd say this more than makes it worth it. For a level 4 spell, Echolocation is a must-have, since you can cast this on allies, and it will allow them to bypass any concealment the enemy might have, so you won't even need blind fight. At level 11, it is now time to get Improved Critical into Bombs. Bombs don't have great damage in Wrath, so critical hits are a way to increase their damage even further, which is why we are going with Trickster 2, for more critical range. Then pick False Life greater here. It will stack with False Life, the normal version. For level 12, Discovery. Honestly, I would delay Greater Cognatogen. It's just a plus 2 increase your intelligence over the normal one. I don't think it's as needed so early. Because at this point we have a lot of other powerful bombs to pick from. Holy Bombs, for example, will deal full divine damage against evil creatures, which is irresistible. On the other hand, because you have Force Bombs for that, and at this point you can just use the Bane of Spirit Ring anyways to get irresistible damage with any of your bombs, I'd much rather focus into two other powerful bombs for crowd control, Cursed Bomb and Dispelling Bombs. Cursed Bombs can inflict a curse whenever they hit the enemy. The curse effect can be quite crippling. The best one is Curse of Deterioration, which means the enemy will suffer a severely creeping minus 4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws at the same time. Now, Dispelling Bombs is another great choice too, as whenever you throw a bomb at the enemy, as the name itself implies, you'll get to dispel their effects. Later on through Legend, we can make this extremely difficult to resist, as if you were a 40 wizard casting dispel magic at the enemy. Because the enemies don't have that many buffs at this point, I would rather go for Cursed Bomb first, then Greater Invisibility here. Now, for our level 13, 15 and 17 feats, we at last get to pick our Trickster Special ones for higher critical range with our bombs, which do matter a lot when it comes to increasing their damage and making them viable, especially for the mid to the late game. First with Improved, Improved Critical and Bomb. Level 5 Alchemist spells aren't that useful, I'm afraid. It's mostly going to be Stone Skin Communal. Now, you might also consider picking Meta Magic and Completely Normal spell at level 13 instead of the first Trickster Critical feat. It will delay your damage by a bit, but on the other hand, Completely Normal can provide a lot of spellbook flexibility. And it matters a lot for this build because you'll have infinite uses of useful spells such as Bomber's Eye, Targeted Bomb Admixture, Shield, even through Strike for any party member. Then for a 14 discovery, Dispelling Bombs. As at this point we are about to enter chapter 4, and enemies there start coming with a lot of pre-buffs. All the level 5 alchemy spells aren't that useful, besides spell resistance. At level 15, the second trickster special feat. And then, well, you would already have learned it before, but death ward or freedom of movement. Now eventually, as you level up and increase intelligence, you'll get more skills. You might as well pick Persuasion if you want, or Athletics, you can get both of them even. For another discovery, well, we can't really keep on delaying the Cognatogens anymore, so greater Cognatogen now. For your level 6 spells, Legendary Proportions is one of the best buffs in the game for melee characters, and Transformation is extremely powerful for any character that doesn't have high base attack bonus, especially pets. Even for our own character too, the problem is, all cat nerfed the spell not to work with Legends past level 20, which is a big bummer. At level 17, the last Trickster special feat for criticals. And then, well, Alchemists can even turn other characters into Dragons too, through Dragon Kind 1, which can be kind of fun. But I'd go for Legendary Proportions now. As for our level 18 discovery, Grand Cognatogen, just in time. Then Dragon Kind 1. For our level 19 feat, I actually want to go with yet another Trickster special feat, this time. Meta Magic, completely normal spell. Then the heal spell. For level 20, Awakened Intellect for the extra boost to intelligence. You'll get to pick a lot of extra discoveries now, they just don't matter that much because you already have the best ones by far. But I'm pretty sure you can go for Greater Mutagen, as it should stack with the Cognatogen. As weird as it sounds. Alright, now let us cover the legend side of our build progression. And amusingly enough, we'll be going with Wizard and Arcane Bomber. The damage of your bombs will continue to increase if you go with Bomber here, for a maximum of 20d6 at level 40. That's double than what we would get from just being an alchemist. It does matter a lot. And here's a fun and very useful fact for even higher synergy. The bomb you gain from Arcane Bomber actually has a different pool of uses per day than your normal alchemist bombs. For example, Acid Bomb comes from Arcane Bomber. Let's throw one. Notice it decreased here, but all of our actual Grenadier Alchemist Bombs are still at full uses, plus you also get a full scaling wizard spellbook, 
and we are intelligence based, so that's pretty fun. For our skill points past level 20, you don't really need higher skill ranks since you use magic device, just leave it at 20. As far as your feats, you can pick the deadly aim feat, however, it will only work for bow damage, it will not increase your bomb damage as far as I have tested. As a wizard, you'll get bonus spell feats every 5 levels, besides level 1. Since we are an extremely high intelligence caster, something fun you can do here is get started into the illusion line of spells. Why? Well, at this point, we are very close to casting the highly powerful weird spell, which is an area of effect instant kill spell. We'll have more than enough DC for it. The arcane bomber class is kinda poor in that. You have to pick four opposition schools as a wizard. You aren't prohibited from casting spells from the schools you pick, it's just that they will cost two spell slots to prepare instead. Which doesn't matter much for us, we have completely normal spell anyways. And a lot of extra spell slots. But to me, I would pick Necromancy, we only need the false life buffs. Conjuration, because at this point, you won't be using many spells of it. Enchantment for the same purpose. And well, the other one is up to you. If you want to cast, let's say, Hellfire Wave with this build, then don't pick Evocation. I'd much rather just go for bombs though, so it's the one I'll be picking. You get to pick a bomb as an arcane bomb, or might as well pick something like Acid or Cold Bombs. We already have a fire one anyways. Now for your wizard spells, I already have a guide for it all, so I'll just skip through this, since you can also learn spells from scrolls. For your level 23 feet, I'd say you have two choices of progressing this build from now onwards. Both are very simple. You can, for example, pick Improved Initiative here. Then, at the next feat, Outflank, if you want some melee versatility. Otherwise, just Improved Initiative and honestly, more and even more extra bombs. That's right, as many extra bombs as possible. So we can truly have an enormous amount to spam them at will. And this is what I'll be doing, so improve the initiative now at 23, and then from level 25 onwards, just extra bombs. It really is that simple. Of course, I imagine if you wanted more power to your melee side, you can also pick stuff like power attack, and improve the critical into bardishes for the death's consonant. It really is up to you, more bomb uses, or more melee power. I'll just be going for the bomb side, after all we are the ultimate bomber. As far as your remaining arcane bomber feats, it's pretty simple. We already have Spell Focus Illusion, so now we want Greater Spell Focus and Illusion. For the other two, Spell Penetration and Greater Spell Penetration. The last one is up to you. You can pick something like Heightened Spell. Even Persistent Spell for higher chances of making your Illusion Instant Depth spells work. Now for Mythic Progression, when it comes to your first Ascension, I would personally go for Close to the Heavens. This has dual uses, you can use it to either heal allies or damage enemies as a ranged touch attack. Since we already have point blank and precise shot, we have a bonus to hit with this. Once you become a legend, it won't matter that much, but for the early game, it can make a big difference until you reach chapter 5 and actually become a legend, it's going to take a while. If however you are already respecting this character later on or starting from after you already became a legend, I would then go for a bit of fun, because this ability doesn't scale based on your mythic ranks, you always have a bonus to skills and we have a lot of skills as a high intelligence build. Now, your first mythic ability I'd say is also going to depend on whether you're playing this build from the start or respecting from later. And as always, when it comes to the legend mechanics, I have just released a complete guide about it that you can check to the side here or in the pinned comment down below, but anyways. For the early game, you most likely want Ascended Element and Fire, because your base bomb, it deals fire damage, and demons, they have some resistance to fire. They are not immune to it, however. Only the Brimorak and Baylor demons are. The rest just have like 10 points or so of damage reduction against this. The problem with this is that starting from around level 10, you'll get your force bombs and the ability to do irresistible damage. So this mythic ability will kind of become useless for you. And as a legend, well, we only have a single mythic ability and a single mythic feat. So to put it simply, if you want power early game, Ascended Element Fire. If you're respecting this character from later on, last stand. As for Mythic 2, I'd much rather go for Mythic Critical, since we are going to fully focus on critical hits as a trickster legend, and bombs really need that extra damage. Alright, now let's cover gear for our legend bomber alchemist. For the amulet, Velexis is as always the best, if you truly want to min-max your intelligence. For armor, we don't really need anything, I would just go for Deadly Race here, since it can increase your ranged touch attacks by plus 4 in sight. Quite a nice boost. 
Plus, as a Haramaki, it will not interfere with our spell casting from the wizard side. For robes, robe of unspeakable truth when combined with the glasses of undeniable truth can grant you a very rare plus two competence bonus two intelligence. For belts, it's pretty simple. At first, spells that increase dexterity, later dexterity and constitution, or just outright belts of physical perfection for all the physical scores. For gloves, there aren't that many. Twisted Temptation is my preferred pick here. It doesn't directly empower your illusion spells, only enchantment ones, but when you cast a spell at the enemy, they will be affected with a minus two penalty to will. For boots, honestly, I would just go for one X sacrifice. Even if we aren't exactly a dexterity based character, you can still use long bows, and we have some ranged feats anyways, for quite decent damage actually. An attack spell round with AB2. Plus, the higher your dexterity, the higher your range at touch attack for bombs too. Now, for headbands, at first, ones that increase intelligence. Ultimately, just go with mental perfection ones. Darkness caress being the best by far. For the glasses, you have two choices. You can once again combine Undeniable Truth with the Robe of Unspeakable Truth for the bonus to intelligence, or, if you want a little bit more DC to your weird instant kill spell, the Goggles of Mind Control. The problem is this comes from Nanyo's last quest, which is a massive pain to do, it really is that annoying. For Cloaks, as the legend, Cloak is kinda subpar, Cloaks of Resistance with the highest modifier. For Rings, Magician's Ring can add a very welcome boost to our instant kill illusion spells. Besides that, the Ring of Triumphant Advance is now here to stay, it really is that powerful. <laughs> Doubling any morale bonuses you have is great for any character, it's essentially an extra plus 4 untyped to both attack and even damage. As for braces, you are mostly stuck with either braces of armor plus 8, if you want to get as high AC as possible, or as usual the braces of abrupt onslaught, as by the time you can get them, you'll have sneak attack already from the Sense Vitals wizard spell. With that out of the way, let's now cover weapons and quick slots. And to be fair, this character can be quite versatile. First, we have the Death's Consonant Bardish. I've used it in some of my other intelligence-focused builds, and the best part about it, of course, is the fact both your attack rolls and damage will scale based on your intelligence modifier instead of strength. And since we have extreme intelligence, we'll get a massive boost to both of these stats. Plus, since we have decent dexterity too, and some of the ranged feats, you can also go with long bows for ranged damage, once again, whenever you run out of bombs. As a matter of fact, for the early game, I prefer to go with long bows, since we already start with point blank and precise shot anyways, we even get rapid shot at 7. Then from chapter 3 onwards, which is when you can get Death's Consonant, is when you should consider using it. We have yet another useful weapon for this build, the Quarter Staff of the War Mage, and this is what you want whenever you truly need to get as high DC as possible. This works for both your Illusion Instant Death spells, and amusingly enough, even for your bombs too. As far as quick slots, it's the usual package for, well, spellcasters, since we do have 20 levels as a wizard. A greater quick and meta magic rod, mostly only to quicken the weird spell, so you outright kill anything anyways. The Grandmaster's rod is here first for synergy with weird, because it allows you to instantly kill any enemy, even if they are immune to, let's say, fear or mind affecting, doesn't matter. And second, if you want to go for spell damage, because we can do that as well. Normal extend and lesser extend meta magic rods, if you need to increase the duration of some of your many useful wizard and alchemist buffs. The trusted friend doesn't matter much for this build since we aren't fully focused on charisma, but it is a legend unique gear. The signet of house was pretty low as usual to increase any skill of choice, and we have high ranks in pretty much almost all of the skills in the game. Of course, high use magic device also lets you use any scroll from any class, mostly for the cleric and divine spells we can't get as an alchemist. The imp familiar can increase your trickery and stealth by a rare profane bonus, so perfect if you want to have your alchemist as the main skill user. Jarsegex, I suppose, can also help a bit if you want to melee or, you know, use your longbow. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my bomb-focused alchemist legend guide. I really try to squeeze as much bomb power as possible with this build, and if you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and also become a channel member. Your support really keeps the channel going. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends!